stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of non-stop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Jerry and hi everybody, welcome to the studio headquarters of Chicagoland's most watched, most talked about Access Television Series. I'm Samantha Bentley and this is the 1083rd edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Well, we've been talking about it for months. As a matter of fact, it was three months ago when Bill traveled to Willett Coach Works in Orland Park, Illinois to learn about something called the Chicago Brushmasters. He found out from creators Harry Willett and Bob Behonek it was an organization of the fine motorsport artists in the Midwest joining hands or brushes, if you will, to be a part of a very special presentation at the 2008 World of Wheels show designed to raise money for the Ronald McDonald Charities. Six weeks later, Bill caught up with some of the artists who served on the committee assembled by Harry and Bob to somehow gather together a large number of fine artists and put them on a platform that would allow them to create art over the World of Wheels weekend. The newly created artwork would then be auctioned off at the show, raising money to be donated to the Ronald McDonald Charities. The artists on the committee seemed to be senior members of this enclave of the art world known as motorsport artists. They included Larry Hansen, Peter Pan, Pat Finley, Joe Balabushko, and our own Ken Sawinski, known in the art world as Sticks. They had a lot of work to do, and we were eager to see how they were going to do it. Part of what they wanted to accomplish was to mentor others who were interested in learning how to do this form of art, including sign painting, pinstriping, graphics, and caricatures. Of course, they also had to have a place to create the artwork to be auctioned, and they also wanted a stock car to letter over the course of the weekend. Before I confuse everyone, let's start there. Let's check out the corner of the Chicago Brushmasters display where they have been lettering a stock car all weekend. We are at the uh, 2008 World of Wheels uh, car show. Uh, we were here yesterday. And by the way, uh, I don't have the uh, jacket that I was awarded on anymore. Uh, everybody told me I was wearing it out, so I'm back to my normal clothes, but I'm very, very proud of that jacket. And I'm very proud of the uh, honor that was bestowed upon me. Now, today's program at the World of Wheels is a little bit different than yesterday's. Yesterday's, of course, uh, we went through uh, the cars that were here and some of the motorcycles and all the rest of it. Today, I'm coming over to this very special presentation that they put together with the Chicago Brushmasters. Uh, I think honoring all of the wonderful motorsport artists that we have uh, in the Midwest. As a matter of fact, we might say nationwide because apparently, according to the uh, the local artists, that most of the uh, the nation's artists actually started in the Chicagoland area. I bet you didn't know all that. No, I didn't. It's yeah. great information. Yeah, no, it really, it's, it's very uh, surprising how many of the guys learned their craft here in the Chicago area and then moved to other parts of the country. Anyway, the reason I'm talking to this fellow, and you better introduce yourself. I'm Art Furman from Illinois Vintage Racing. Okay, and the reason I'm talking to him is part of what they did here at the Brushmasters display, part of what they did is they've been painting a stock car, and to do the stock car, they had to have a stock car, and that's what you brought. Yes, we did. Um, one of our, our, our local builders from uh, Joliet, Illinois, Bill Nippenberg from Bill's Speed Shop, he put together this car in a short amount of time for this charity auction, and it's, it's a late model stock car chassis and a 1970 Mustang body. Okay, and from there, uh, after you put the car together, it went off to a body shop to be painted? Yes, it went to in Joliet Collision Revision, and they painted it up the original color of Dick Trickle's car, purple and white, and uh, Bill 
brought the car down with his crew from the speed shop, and here we are. Okay, but it had no lettering of any kind on it at that time? None, not so, none at all. Now, during the course of this weekend, and we, I should say we're on the third day of the weekend now, during the course of the weekend, uh, they've had uh, two or three different artists uh, working on lettering the car. Yes, we have. Uh, quite famous at that. Three, three sign painters. That they've been taking turns, and they've been working day and night since Friday night painting this car. So ultimately, by the end of the show, the car will be done? Yes, it will be, and it'll be ready to race. It'll be racing this summer locally. Okay, as a matter of fact, you guys do race these vintage cars locally. Yes, we do, and competitively, and we it's a traveling series that we race uh, like once every three weeks, and we race asphalt and dirt. Well, I'll tell you something, I'm going to look forward to that uh, during the course of the year. It's pretty cool because obviously I'm 64 years old, I remember these cars well. Oh, yeah, it, and it's, it's just great, fun, family entertainment. Great. Well, now what we've got to do, now we understand how the car got here and what its role is here this weekend, uh, I want to talk to the painters that actually did the artwork on it. And uh, maybe uh, you'll learn a little something about uh, how artwork is done on the race cars. I sure hope so. The artwork on race cars, motorcycles, boats, streetcars, and all the rest is a joy to look at and an important part of motorsport. I think the youngsters might say it's part of the bling. Hi, I'm Janine Lauschat. And if I understand correctly, there were three artists who have been working on this car. Let's start with the man who did most of the layout work, the great Pat Finley. I now have with me one of the perhaps most famous artists in the Midwest, and that's probably not fair to a lot of other guys, uh, but tell the folks who you are. Pat Finley. Right, Pat Finley, uh, you know when you spend any time around these guys, there's certain people they refer to all the time. Pat Finley is one of them. Stitz is another one of them. Uh, Peter Pan, help me, the guy that did the cold leaf. Bob Mahonic. Bob Mahonic, yeah. who, did, who designed the, the Chicago yes, lo uh, yeah, Rush uh, Masters logo. Joe, we call him Joe Babushka. He's really Joe Balabusco. Yeah. He's the goal leaf man. It's, you know, I don't know if you guys realize it or not. You know, there's a lot of talk about uh, Dexter, of course. Now, oh, yeah. I, I was an admirer of Dexter's work back in the late 50s and early 60s at the old O'Hare Stadium and all that. And I don't know if you guys realize this. You guys have kind of become the Dexters now. Well, I don't know about that. He well, was a, I do. The younger he's artists. A, when he's you guys start, to follow, Bill. Well, when you guys pick up a brush now, the younger artists stop what they're doing and come over and watch. I don't know if you noticed it or not. Yeah, they they like what we're doing, and we like you know we've got a hood set up. They can play the pinstripes and what have you. We're trying to mentor them and like that. It's it's, good, it's, you know. it's it's pretty cool how uh, the, it's a generational thing and how it's passed from generation right. to generation. Right. Sure. Now what we're talking about here now we're going to be talking about a lot of things on today's program. But the first thing I picked was this stock car that you guys are lettering. Yep. And in the old days, and I remember it well, Dexter had a reputation at the Old O'Hare Stadium. Dexter had a reputation that he could letter a late model stock car in two hours. Well. He could do that one. We did took us a day and a half to do this one. So, right. but but you know he was noted for that. Though. Oh yeah, he was very fast. Very very yeah. fast. Yes. Very fast. Now you guys do a little different. You guys actually do a layout. This car in particular, when you when you have to do a mimic of a car, we're doing a replica of a Dick Trickle car. I take these pictures like I've got right here in my hand. I want to I want to show, yeah, show this picture. Exactly. This, Just hold it up for the picture, audience. This picture, we use this car as a reference for the car we're doing as a. This is the, the model. What I do is take this picture, I have it, I take it to a big copy machine that they don't distort the picture. I, I, I go to a copy shop, you know, with a copy machine, and I take and blow this picture up so that, to a scale that I can use. So I hand draw all the lettering off of this car to scale so that it totally replicates this, this car we're doing. You know, looks like the other car is what I'm right. trying to say. And then I make pounce patterns, which okay. are... Let me stop okay. you right there, because okay. he's all concerned that we don't have a pounce wheel to show you. And what a pounce wheel is, think of it like a pizza cutter, where it has like a round wheel, and they cut a pizza with it, except it's all serrated on the edge, so it doesn't really cut the paper that you run it across. It punches little holes in it. So once he lays out the outline of the lettering and takes the pounce wheel and goes across that outline, you end up with little holes where the lines are. Then if you take and lay that on the car and take talcum powder or something pounce like, bag, yes. what is it? Pounce bag. A pounce bag and you pop it onto the pattern, you end up, there, there you go. Is. You just take and hit it on the car and it makes powder. You when you hit it on the car, it makes powder. It goes through the, through holes. the holes. It leaves the impression on the car of the lettering that you want to do. And then he said the funniest thing in the world when he was explaining it to me. He says, then it's just paint by number. That's basically no, what it no, is. Dude, no, dude, you no. got to have a steady <laughs> hand and an artist's touch. And it's not, trust me, you can make a real mess out of it at any well, point. <laughs> that's true. It can happen. But the reason I do this is there's three artists, or two artists other than myself, that are working on this car. And what, by doing the pounce patterns, 
we can all work on either the same thing or other things, and we're all gonna, it's all gonna look the same. Right. Instead this, of one guy's technique on one thing and, and looking at different than the other side. because you're trying to duplicate an exactly, old car and all exactly. that. Exactly, we want it all to look the same, so we make the patterns. Any of us can do any of the lettering on the car, regardless if I do one side, the other artist does the other side, whatever, it's all gonna look the same because of the pounce pattern. Now, you guys have been working down here all weekend. This is the yes. third day of the show. This mm -hmm. is the first time you guys have ever really attempted something like this. Mm -hmm. How has the crowd received it? What do you think? Oh, they love it. They, they come up. I think so, they, too. I, mean, I was watching my yesterday. Eyes, my eyes are squinting from the flash bulbs. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. People love, they love the old car and just the mystique and the, the people. They, and they, they like say, watching you guys work. They, uh, I've had people say, that isn't, it, it isn't stuck on stuff. And I said, no, it's paint. We're painting it on here. Oh, they quit doing that 20 years ago. I said, no, they didn't. I still make a living doing it. So, Absolutely. You know. And that's the point we want to make. I right. hope it right. never happens. Where the artists go away, where the whole, th where the oh. world becomes a computer and, printout. And so do you know? I, Bill. I'm 62, but I hope I can go to lady too. You know. I, I know exactly it, you what know. you mean. And believe me, yes, the computers can do a wonderful job. It's nice to do the bakery trucks, and they're all the same, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're talking about race cars and custom oh, yeah. cars, Definitely. there's nothing like a real artist no. touch. That's you're right, exactly. It's that's just what the what it needs, you know. Okay, now you you did the patterns and that for this yes, car, sir. but you weren't the only guy painting on it. We've no, got somebody else here to talk to. Yes, we do, okay. Mr. Mr. Bill Jarvis, that are known in Chicago as Jive. 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 Okay, and we are going to talk to him next. I hope he's around, right? Yes, he's standing right over here. He's matter of fact, he's a. I'd like to just say something about Bill. Please Bill, do. Bill yes. Bill and I, we go back painting stock cars. Probably into the, I started painting stock cars at Sycamore Speedway. 1963 when I was really learning finishing to learn the trade and it was quite competitive out there with many sign painters six probably six of us out there we used to compete against each other so you could get the good best looking car but we were all friends but Bill and I have known each other through the years through our work we've never met till last year is that right and that's that's over 30 years and I, I mean the guy's great I, I really like he said it's just it, we were proud to work with each other on this car yeah. along with Ron Malik or Jelenic I'm sorry he actually painted some Dick Trickle cars. He was up in Wisconsin Rapids and painted some cars for Dick Trickle. You know, I think that's part of the, one of the coolest things about this Chicago Brushmaster organization you guys put together, that it actually puts you guys in contact with each other. Oh, it's great. And it used to be, Bill, when you went in a sign shop, back when I was trying to learn back 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you'd go in and one of the old timers and they'd just put the brush down and say, well, what do you want? They didn't want to do anything. They just wanted you to leave. It was, it's, it, it is, this whole letterheads thing and the Brushmasters and everything, it's just, has brought us all together and it, it, I mean we, we try to teach the young people we try to keep the trade going because we know it's a dying art but yet we want people to still know how to do it and you know he just mentioned a word and it's one of the problems that I have with the whole thing um, and I don't have an answer for this these guys all of them seem to act almost like they're house painters that they have jobs and they just kind of slap it on there and yet what you're doing is creating art now that I understand there's a commercial side to this. When somebody comes with a truck and needs to be lettered, they know it takes so long to do this, and you guys have so long to knock it out. So there's a commercial side of it, yes. but there's, I, I would hate to see the art get lost in the commercial. Do you know what I I'm, agree, uh, I know, yeah. I agree. And so somehow we need to straighten that, that part of it. Yes, there's a commercial side, and yes, there's commercial work, but there's also an art side of it too, and right. I don't want this stuff to be lost forever. No, I have a, I have a lot of trouble in my shop because I, I think, as we spoke before, I think, in an interview, I'm not a computer person. I'm 62. I don't even turn on a computer. I know nothing about computers. My kids do. My wife does. I don't. I don't care about them. I never have. I, I, I have people come into my shop and they say, oh, you don't do the vinyl work? I said, no, I'm strictly a hand painter. And just a, maybe I could tell you a quick story. I went to a junkyard about three months ago looking for a part for my kid's race car in Sandwich, Illinois. I painted a truck for Sandwich Auto Records back in 1967. This truck is in the junkyard in Sandwich, back in the corner under the trees, and it's, it had red paint on it, and believe me, the red paint, you could still see that it was lettered, and that's 1966, that's several years ago. If that was vinyl, you'd know there was nothing on it nowadays. There would have never been anything, but that paint stayed for that many years. Most important question, because I know that's what everybody's thinking, did you buy the truck? No. <laughs> Come on, that's your work. I, should, I guess I should have bought the door off it or oh, something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Anyhow, we're going to move on now because we want to talk to uh, the other artists that, that worked on this vehicle. Once again, the great Pat Finley. Always a, more than a pleasure and honor to have him on the show. Thank you, Bill. You really have to watch these guys work to appreciate what they do. Hi, I'm Mae Chin. Now let's meet the second artist who worked on the project. 
I now have another camera shy artist. All you guys are camera shy. I don't know where you got that. No, you like the camera? Not really. Yeah, no, I know it. These guys, I'm dragging them out in front of the camera. First of all, tell the folks who you are. My name is Bill Jarvis. No, uh, you were. we were just Well, now they gave me a nickname when I was a young man, Jive, J-I-V-E. Uh, and what does that mean? Why was that given to that you? That was a play on my last name, and uh, you can pretty much deduct what it said. You know? Is there any reason uh, why uh, most of the uh, sign artists and, and uh, motorsport artists all have nicknames? Yeah, it's an identity thing, you is, know. Is it really? Uh, yes, yes. Um, okay, and your real names aren't good enough for that? Nah, nobody knows me by my real name. Really? Uh, I got that name when I was about 17 years old by a kid that was 13 and drunk. Really? And I told him if he didn't behave, I was going to whip his, you know, and uh, he called me that. Jive, think about the rest of it. Okay, I'm not going to do that on the air, but I'll tell you something. Uh, I heard some very nice things about you from Pat Finley, so apparently you've developed quite a reputation over the years. Well, Pat and I have known each other through our work for years. I just met him just That's a little while saying. back. So this brush match thing is pretty cool. Exactly, and just, just to work with these guys on this car, uh, him and RJ, is just the biggest honor that's ever been you know, you know I did a thing with the with some of the Brushmasters uh, about a month and a half ago, something like that, at a panel jam. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I guess I took away from it that I was surprised at, all nice guys, and you guys like each other. Yeah, we do, but years ago we were competitors, and some of them were pretty caustic. And it did, yeah, so things have changed. Things have changed. And for the better. For the better, it's like a brotherhood now. Isn't that cool? I love it. Okay, tell I me what it. we're doing in this car. What's been your role on it? Okay, my car, uh, my role on the car, I was chosen to be one of the three fellows that lettered the car. Dick Trickle was a was one of my heroes on the short tracks. And uh, Pat did uh, some, uh, Pat did all the layout. Okay, I came along, I added some shadows. Uh, just various duties that we have to do when we do a car like this. Like Pat would do a number in white, I would come back and shadow it in black. You Is know? it harder to uh, work collaboratively like that? Would you rather do all your own from the beginning? or This is about the second time I've done this. Uh, I did it years ago with another fella. And uh, it worked out pretty good then, but this time was just awesome. So it worked well? Oh, yeah. Now, I want to, once again, and I'm going to hammer away at this a little bit for the viewers because I really want you to appreciate what these guys do. Uh, because probably more than any other group, these guys are responsible for what motorsport looks like. Uh, visually, when you see stock car racing or drag racing or what have you, uh, you're seeing the work of these artists. And when you think about it, of all the thousands and thousands of race cars and motorcycles, there's really very few of you. Well, there's more and more because there's a, not, we're starting to get a crop of young fellas uh, coming up that want to do this because they were told by their parents or something about the cars years ago that used to be so colorful and they were all hand lettered and people seem to be taken by that. Well, uh, yeah, I think so. As a matter of fact, some of the guys, and I remember this very well from the car magazines back in the 50s and 60s, uh, a guy named Von Dutch, I'm sure you've heard that name. Oh, yeah. These guys became celebrity artists, uh -huh. agreed? A lot of people think Von Dutch just made clothes. Uh, Von Dutch was one of the fathers of what we do. No question. Uh, one of the original pinstripers. Yes, and, yeah. and, and there are others too, and I would, like I say, I would hate to see that go away because there's nothing like an artist's touch to finish these cars and motorcycles on. Well, our mission now is to pass it on. Really? And, you, that, you're that, at that, that stage it, of your life? In a nutshell, we want to pass it on and make sure it doesn't die. We don't want it to die. It's not going to die. Uh, yesterday was a great day here. I mean, it was, the place was wall-to-wall -wall people, and I came over by your display several times lots of interest lots of did you get any youngsters that came out for some tutoring yep got a little guy here uh, that was just doing some work a little while ago uh, I don't think he's more than 14 years old and he's on his way uh, folks this is really wonderful and I, we talked about this on a show we did a few weeks ago that we put on the air uh, where we were telling you what was going to happen here at the 2008 World of Wheels uh, that this was an opportunity for youngsters and, and believe me for some of you watching this, you won't know what I'm talking about. Some of you will know exactly what I'm talking about. I was one of those guys that had many magazines taken away from me in high school. I was one of those guys who was always drawing cars and designing lettering at YouTube and designing oh, yeah. pinstriping and all the rest of it. I was thrown out of more than one class on account of it. Okay, for those guys, what an opportunity to come down and be mentored by guys of your stature that have been making a living at it for 40 and 50 years, and you guys seem more than willing to share. 
we want to share. That's the nature of the business now. We want to share it with everybody. I, I couldn't be more pleased about that because apparently some of you guys, and it's the frustration I've had uh, since I've been doing this uh, work with the with the artists and that, is somehow they almost think of themselves like house painters. They're just doing a job instead of the art that they're actually creating. And once you start thinking of it as art, I think you have a greater appreciation. Do you know what I'm saying? Or? We are all our own worst critics. Well, you really are. We are. We're our own worst critics. But the work I've seen here at the Royal of Wheels blows me away. I can't believe how much talent these young fellows have got. Isn't that cool? It's just awesome. Yeah, no, it really is. And by the way, the reason I haven't appreciated, I've confessed this before. I was one of the guys, yes, that uh, was drawing the cars and designing the pinstriping and all that. And I bought uh, the brushes, the little sword brushes, the pinstripe. I did all of that. And I went to J.C. Whitney and I got the uh, the bottle with yeah. the rollers. I had one roller, a two roller, a three roller. Yep. You know what I'm talking about, yep. right? Yep. Uh, and you know what I found out? I don't have any talent. I could do it pretty good but you know what you can always tell when you look at the guy's work that's only pretty good and then you can see I, you know what it is a real artist a real sign artist and graphic artist when you look at the signs that they do they don't look wrong right do you know what i mean right it the, to do this thing uh, especially nowadays a lot of people did it because they had to make a living some way and they were artistically inclined but today if you want to do this thing it has to be an obsession because you will get so frustrated until you get to where you're going. No question about it. And there, there are rules. There are technical rules in this game because I took some sign painting lessons and all that. And I had the newspapers where you turn it sideways and use the columns. You know yeah. what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah. Oh. And I did the practicing and all that. There are some rules. An A, the top of the A has got to be higher than the line or it will look smaller to the, the eye. Letters. All the letters have to be larger than the square letters. It's an optical illusion. Right, it's not, so if you made all the letters the same height, they would look terrible when you looked at the sign. A zero next to, say, a T or a, a W or something like that, if you made the zero the same size on top and the bottom, you can look at, a, look at a soup can. If you made that zero the same size, it would look smaller visually. It's an optical illusion, and it's yes. something that you guys have that, like, an almost sixth sense to know the proportion of how to, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I, I did a lot of jobs that I couldn't figure out whether zero looked smaller or, or the O, and I, until I found out from a, a fellow that did it for years. And now you're passing all that on? Yes. Listen, I think it's great, and I want to thank you for spending a little bit of time. Anything you'd like the audience to know about the artists uh, that, uh, that you know, and I have one more follow-up question, but anything that I haven't thought to ask that you'd like the audience to know about the work that you guys do and the art you do? No, I, I just uh, I, I just wish people would uh, understand what we're doing here, especially a world of wheels. This is for the kids. To pass it on. To pass it on. Now I have a follow-up question. I've been meaning to ask this the last couple of interviews I've done, and somehow it always skips my mind. It seems like all of you guys, and I don't I don't quite see the relationship. All of you guys seem to be motorsport enthusiasts. And peculiar that sign painters would have that. I don't get it. What does Soldier Field when they had auto racing down there? A lot of people don't know about Soldier Field, but they had stock car racing down there. Oh, you there. bet, sure. And uh, I went down there, and I'm looking at the colors on those cars, and I couldn't tell you then why the colors fascinated me. But years later, I figured it out. So you two are a race enthusiast and all that? Absolutely. I've driven. It, and driven. Yeah. It, but isn't that it, it, it seems like all of you guys have. Yeah, I drove, well, I, I didn't drive that many races. There was a car, uh, uh, I'm sure you know Mark Urban from Santa Fe. Uh, what was his name? His name was Mark Urban. He drove Sportsman. Didn't know him, no. Okay, he was uh, one of Nippenberg's uh, friends. And uh, the next year after he quit, I got to drive that car for a few races just before Santa Fe closed. I was there the last night. Now, did you find that was something that you were going to be great at, or you felt that your real talent was in artwork? If I could have stayed with it, I think I could have got it done. You think you could have done it? Even at my age. <laughs> so you're still a racer? At heart. I'll tell you, it, it never leaves us, folks. That's uh, part of us. I'm just really interested that it seems like almost all of the sign artists, the motorsport artists, these guys were all, if not racers, race enthusiasts. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, let's see who else we can find to talk to down here. Thanks for spending some time with us. Now, let's meet the third member of the team working on this car. And don't forget, they've been lettering it in front of the public all weekend. Now let's meet the man they call R.J. the Wizard. Well, I am delighted to present the third member of the team that is uh, working on the uh, lettering in this car, and you are? Uh, Ron Jelinek. Better, Where are you from? Uh, Berwyn, now, originally went Berwyn, now I'm in uh, Bloomingdale, Illinois. Okay, so a local guy. Right. 
Okay, and what are you doing on the car? Uh, I did the old English lettering on the roof and on the, on the front fender. Now, is that something you did off of the patterns or something you did kind of freestyle your own? No, it was all off the patterns because we wanted to duplicate the original. Right, so this is a little bit different kind of a project for you guys that you're not doing like original artwork on it, you're duplicating artwork from another era. Do I have it right? Correct. Question, when you do stock cars and things like that, do you have to restrain yourself from getting too art fancy because the car could go out and be crashed in practice and they've got to redo the thing and it's got to be something they can redo quickly? Or does that not enter your thinking? Uh, a little bit yes and a little bit no. You want to do stuff that looks good, but yet you don't want to take a lot of time because next week you might be doing it again and then the week after that you never know when they're going to crash. So that does come into your thinking then? Right. And also you're looking at doing stuff that photographs well, uh, a lot of contrast in the colors because you have to remember that a lot of this stuff is for magazines and pictures and TV so it photographs so the sponsors names and that stuff is readable right for example of course I'm familiar with television and in television you want to keep everything bold and simple because television is does not have great resolution so you, if you get it too fancy it just doesn't uh, doesn't uh, it almost looks messy uh, rather than having a right. bold and simple Real, same rules readable on styles uh, and not a lot of uh, glitter kind of stuff that bends the light you know all different ways you want to kind of stay away from that it's better off being uh, straight colors and simple easy readable stuff now how long you've been in the business uh, this will be my 47th year 47 years so you've been feeding yourself a long time with this yes okay I understand you've done some work in Wisconsin yes in the uh, 80s when I lived in uh, Wisconsin Rapids I actually did a number of vehicles for Dick Trickle so you did a lot of Dick Trickles because you had one in your hand that you yeah. showed me but the 99 car or, yeah, it was the 99 uh, car that was sponsored by uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. And you did all the artwork on that? Yes. The only thing I didn't do was the Pabst Blue Ribbon on the hood. That was a sticker that was supplied by... By the sponsor. By the sponsor. Which is often the case. Right. Because I did some work for him also. Then when he was sponsored by Coors Light, but Coors Light were stickers. And then after a while... Coors Light went to all stickers. They did no hand lettering on the car. Now, do you strictly do stock cars, or have you ever done things like motorcycles and boats and airplanes and things like that? Actually, I did more drag racing vehicles than I did stock cars. I was involved in drag racing myself, and I did a lot of drag cars. And then, naturally, you do motorcycles, boats, whatever, whatever comes along as far as lettering is, you know, signs, cars, trucks, anything. You know, I have a friend of mine, uh, I'm sure he's not watching, but John Olson, if you're watching, I'm talking about you, uh, who had a unique talent for doing lettering, cartoon lettering, which I think is a very common style for you guys, right? Yeah. Okay, this guy, he was he had a body shop, he was a body man, didn't do lettering for a living, or anything, but all the guys brought their stuff over to him just as friends, he would do it. He could pick up a brush and do cartoon lettering like I was writing with a ballpoint pen. He had an incredible talent for it I always said he should develop that you know and become a sign artist and all I just thought he had now are you one of those guys kind of the same way or did you have to work real hard at it I didn't have to work real hard at it I served apprenticeship and learned from uh, other sign painters and that's where I started and picked up the the airbrush pinstriping end of it later on now, do you consider, and I kind of break this down, although I, this all fell on deaf, deaf ears the last time I did it with the Brushmasters guys. I think, and I could be wrong, but I think that we could break this down and there are guys that do lettering, there are guys that do pinstriping, there are guys that do graphics and caricatures and things like that, and guys that maybe do flames. Would you fall into any one of those, or do you do them all? Pretty much all of them. Really? Yeah. Uh, what what do you think your strong point is when you're doing artwork? Uh, I like the lettering and I like doing airbrush. Those those are good strong points. I do a lot of that. Okay, because I used to when I was drawing, I like every other kid in high school. Not every kid, but car kid in high school. I always used to draw flames and things like that. And I just thought I was the best flame drawer in the world. You didn't have any feelings like that. Oh, I did a lot of drawing in school. Yeah. So you were another one of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right, is there anything you want the audience to know about? You know, I, I'm troubled by, I keep saying I'm stumbling. Artists, sign painters, uh, how do you guys identify yourselves? Well, right now, the, 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 the basic, they put everybody in kind of auto art category. 
but I'm, I feel that I'm a sign painter first. Sign painter first. First, pinstriper second. Whose work do you like, now, other than your own? Other than my own, uh, several kind. Uh, Bob Bahanek, uh, you know. He designed the Brushmaster's logo. Beautiful right, work, yeah. yes. Yeah, he's one of the top, uh, you know, Stitch uh, from Stitch, absolutely first class, without a doubt. You yes. know, there, there's just so many guys I couldn't stand here. I, I could probably take an hour and be 50, 60 guys. Everybody I, that's at this show is in that category. Oh, They're I know. In. I watched Peter Pan pick up a brush and right. just start pulling stripes. I could not believe the there work. There is not anybody that's a weak painter here. No, you know what I would have liked to have done if, if I were just coming here to, not to do television, just to be a spectator? I would have loved to have spent maybe 15, 20 minutes watching each, each artist's work and see if I could pick out one that would be close to what I like. You know what I mean? Right. Because we, I think the audience tends to look at you guys as all the same. In their own mind, they do stripes, they do lettering. But I think there's quite a difference in your work. And I think if we knew enough about you guys, oh, yeah. everybody would find somebody they like better, you know? Right. And, well, it's, it's art, uh, you know, what one guy likes, the other guy doesn't like. So right. it's very objective. Anything is, that's art is, you know, that's like subjective. it or dislike sure, it. Yeah. And one thing that I feel, if, if, you, if anybody would come to anything where there's a pinstriping jamboree and look at all the different stuff and just remember that this all comes from the same basic can of paint and a handful of brushes, and these are what the creative juices of all these people, all the different stuff, how their different styles and things come from the same basic. Now, as you just said that, a thought came to my mind. Uh, I attended a panel jam here several weeks ago and did some interviews there and all that. Now, it didn't occur, are, th are those things for the public? Can the public go to those? Uh, some of them they can. Most of the shows now have big ones. There's, there's a lot of summer events where they have panel jams. They can watch guys. A lot of the big car shows, there'll be pinstripers there. They can come and watch and see what's going on. Very cool. And last question I got for you, and the other guys have all gone this way. Uh, part of what they want to do is mentor the young coming along, not just the young, uh, middle-aged, whoever that wants to learn this art form. Sure. They seem to be very open with their information about how they work. Do you oh, feel yeah. that way too? Oh, yeah. we got to pass it on to somebody. Uh, so that's an important element of all this to you. Oh yeah, with the with the computers and uh, you know generated stuff, to, you, you got to keep the true artist going and the painted end of it where it's hand done. You're exactly right. And by the way, folks, I'll tell you how you can tell if you look real close at some of these gorgeous customs or custom bikes or whatever. Look real close. Sometimes at the very end of a pinstriping line, you'll see a little tiny set of initials. Am I right? right. Identifying the yeah, artist. Most artists sign it somewhere small. So you gotta kind of look, gotta for, look it. for it, but it's but it's pretty cool to look for it. And after a while, you'll start identifying uh, styles that you particularly like and artists that you like. Fair enough. Oh yeah. And that's I hope part of the objective of what you guys are doing. Oh yeah, everybody wants to do their style, whatever they evolve into what's what they like and do it for them. You know, whatever way they want for themselves first, and then hopefully that pleases customers and find somebody that likes it. Okay, now anything else you want to tell folks before we go? No, that's about it for me. Well, I'll tell you what it's for me. I couldn't be more pleased. Hats off to the World of Wheels, folks. What a great idea to set, set aside a whole area for these guys to show how to work and to show others how they do it and all that. Just what a terrific idea. I hope this becomes an ongoing part of the World of Wheels. Let's just take a moment to see what's going on at the auction on the other side of the display. All right, the number one door. There is a reason that that is the number one door. You know why? What's the reason? It's the last one we have of the doors, okay? Just wait till they hold the no, the no door nationals. You're gonna be able to sell these doors to these cars. $25 I want for that. First $25 takes it. We wanna get rid of this last door. First $25 takes it. Come on, people. You can't keep me with a door. What do I need a door for? Where? There's 25. There's 30, there's 35, I lied, I'm trying, you know. Okay, the first $40 takes it, give me $40. Come on, don't, don't panic like that just because I'm looking at you, $40, it's yours. You can put that $40 behind it, 50. The auction went extremely well the entire weekend, particularly Saturday night. Now let's go to another part of the display to learn about a new kind of pinstriping called virus striping. It really caught Bill's eye and he wanted you to see it. 
By the way, if you watch carefully in the background of the interview, you can see some of the artists working on panels to be auctioned. I know how to start this interview out. I'm going to have him repeat his last name several times. Please, last name, slowly. B. Ho Neck. Again. B. Ho Neck. B. Ho Neck. B. Ho Neck. Three syllables. B. Ho Neck. Bohonic? B. Honek. B. Honek or Bohonic? B. Honek. B. Honek. B. Honek. You would not believe, after last day, the struggle I had in the studio <laughs> trying to get the girls to pronounce the name yeah, correctly. Yeah. And they got me so twirled up, I didn't know how to pronounce it after a while. It is Everybody not Everybody has the same problem, so don't feel bad. Okay, we want, first of all, it's Bob Bohonek, right? Bob Bohonek, yes. Bob Bohonek. I just did it. It's Bohonek. Bob Bohonek. And I want this guy to have the credit. He's the one that designed the Chicago Brushmasters logo, and it is so cool. What a work of art. And I've said before, the really hard thing for the public to understand about this is that when you look at a sign, if it doesn't look wrong, the artist was successful. Right. It's not so right. much a matter that they right. notice that it's right. right, it's that it doesn't it look, look wrong. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And, and that's a really hard thing to achieve. It is. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. One to, letter at a time. And to get the spacings right and everything so that it looks yep. natural to the eye, yep. but if you actually measure the letters, they're not the same. They're not. They're not. They're not exactly And if alike. you made them the same, it would look terrible. It'll look very computerized. Isn't that amazing? Very, yeah, very tight yeah. computerized. Yeah. All right, now, there's so much I wanted to do down here on this uh, uh, Brush Masters exhibit. And once again, do you guys know yet, I, I mentioned it earlier, I hope this is going to be a regular part of the World of Wheels show, having the Brush Is that? Have you talked the, about that yet or no? The McDonald's Corporation is on board for, the, for as many years as we want to do this, and we're going to have a meeting uh, in the upcoming month to start planning for next year's show. So McDonald's is sort of a prime mover on this thing? They are, they're 100% they're behind us along with Golden State Foods. Boy, I hope we get a chance to talk to some of those folks before this is all over today because uh, I want to pat them on the back. What oh, a, it was, they've been wonderful, they've been helping us 100% support and we couldn't be happier. Okay, one of the things, I, I wanted the artists to be here to do this. As a matter of fact, yesterday, and yesterday the place was, the joint was rocking. I couldn't get near the place <laughs> yesterday. Uh, is it, I, everybody's going to get the idea that this is all older guys doing this. You've got a 19-year-old girl that does great work. We have a 19-year-old girl that's been doing it for probably three years now. We had a bunch of younger boys that have been here today that are good stripers already at, at 13, 14, 15 years old. So Isn't that amazing? It is absolutely amazing. I, and I I'll really, bet they've got steady hands at that age. And they do. Yeah, yeah. Their nerves haven't been frayed yet from all the things in life, you know, so. Okay, one of the things I wanted to do, and, I, and again, I wish I had more knowledge about this. I'd like to hang around with these guys for a few days because I almost stumble on things that these guys aren't telling me, and they think everybody knows it and everybody doesn't know it. And we've got an example in our hand. I want to show this just to the audience for a moment, and I hopefully I'll remember to get a picture of this and show this to you so you can see it a little bit better. But the remarkable thing about this, and I wanted to, as quickly as I can tell this story, Years ago on Channel 11, I saw a thing about an artist. I don't remember the name of the artist. I don't remember the name of the pictures. But what struck me about it was the, the technique. And what the artist did, and this was from centuries ago, is that he would back from his canvas 20 or 30 feet, look at it, go up to the canvas, make several brush strokes, then walk 20, 30 feet back, put more strokes on. And when you got really close to the canvas, the picture sort of blew away. And when you got back 20 or 30 feet, it was a brilliant piece of work. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of that. When you are far back from this, it looks like perfectly symmetrical pinstriping. And when you get close to it, there's not one symmetrical thing about it. How am I doing? It's totally asymmetrical. There's nothing the same on either side of these designs. But from a distance, you step back, it's the same distance, pretty much, on the left it is to the right. So but all these proportions are symmetrical. These are symmetrical, but everything inside of those parameters are, are asymmetrical. And what is this called? This is called the virus striping. Uh, a good friend of mine up in Wisconsin uh, developed this style probably about eight or nine years ago, Dave Jeffries. He's one of the original three fellows that started the uh, custom culture charity auction in Milwaukee. And he developed a brush called the virus, which is, which is this purple okay, brush. I want you to hold it real steady, just like that. And a normal striping brush is what I call the little, the little sword, sword brush. striper, yes. The, the sword brushes, but this is totally different. The, the sword striper in the bottom is made out of uh, probably Russian squirrel hair, and the, the virus brush is a synthetic hair. You can turn it all different directions and it'll make the same line. The difference between these two is the one on the bottom, you can only turn two or three ways are straight. You cannot turn it all the way around. It will not go all the way around. The one on the top will. The other one on top will, because synthetic is the same distance all the way around. It's a round brush, all sides are round. Okay, now, 
you, you can go ahead and hold that back again. Oh, I don't want the flash to get on the camera. Better do it this way. Uh, what else do I not know about? I had never heard of the virus striping. I think it's very cool. I haven't heard of that. What are, what are the secrets you guys hold that you're not telling me about? I'm supposed to tell everybody. Well, when I first met Dave Jeffries and I, I saw what he was doing, I thought the guy was sick or demented or something. Why are, you, why are you doing this? He says, well, I'm tired of making symmetrical designs. So I watched what he was doing one day and he made this big long panel. The stripes were all over the place like there was a bunch of worms on uh, LSD or something. And I says, well, this is cool. I got to have one of these brushes. And Dave says, I got one for you. He gave me one. I went home and tried it. And I was hooked ever since then. And everybody that he, you know, he knows in this group and the Milwaukee group have a virus brush now. We're all virus. You're, by, you're all by Mr. Dave Jeffries, yeah. Now, yeah. are there any other techniques of striping techniques that I am unaware of that I should know about so I can tell people? Well, we use uh, uh, regular lettering quills sometimes to make fatter lines. If you hold the quill on its edge, and then press harder, you can get a thicker line and, and you can twist it around and make a thick and a thin line all at the same time, similar to the way lettering is done, hand lettering is done. But you're just making designs with uh, with the same brush. It's pinstriping designs. A lot of guys do that. There's some guys do that here this weekend. Folks, I have to tell you, you really, now that I know it's gonna be part of the World of Wheels, yeah, I've gotta wrap up now. I see I'm getting a wrap up signal. I've gotta wrap up on this. This is gonna be part of the World of Wheels, apparently for the foreseeable future. Don't miss it, come down here, learn all about this, be impressed by these guys the same way I'm impressed by these guys. Uh, we've gotta change tapes, we're coming back for more. Next, Bill spotted one of the artists actually working on a car. Let's meet him. All right, I uh, caught one of these guys in action and you are? Bill Faust. Where are you from, Bill? Shannon, Illinois. For Shannon? Shannon, Illinois, yeah. Shannon, where is that? About 120 miles straight west of Chicago. What brings you all the way up to Chicago? This, <laughs> being with the guys and striping. Okay, so you're part of the Brushmasters thing. Yeah, 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 we're helping the cause. How long have you been in the business? Oh, uh, I've been doing it 25 years full time. All right, I've watched you work and I cannot tell you how impressed I am. Uh, at 25 years, you don't find your hand getting shaky or anything? Oh no, not usually, unless I drink a little too much coffee. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this particular car that you're doing, I was talking to the owner of the car, and he specifically wanted it, what people are calling hand-lettered now, which is new language for me. I don't know what other kind of lettering there is but hand-lettering, but apparently everybody's gotten so used to the computers that we now identify it when it's done by a real artist. Um, he, wa he specifically wanted hand-lettering because it's a nostalgic car, and this is the way it was always done. Do you understand that sort of thing? Oh yeah, exactly. You know, that's when I started out, this is kind of the thing I used to do was some race cars like this. We did them all by hand. That's just the way it was done. Watching these guys work is such a pleasure. I couldn't help but be envious. It's a shame their art is applied to perishable canvases. Many of the cars they do are destroyed in crashes. I guess that's why panel painting has become popular. Speaking of panel painting, let's peek in on the auction. Okay, give me 45, give me 45, 45, give me 45, and 45, give me 45. Okay, 50, 50 now, 50, 55, 55, 55, 50. You're bidding against an old man. Don't blink into the sun. Look at me, sir. $55. Thank you very much. $60. Give me 60. I get 65, 65, 65, give me 65. 65. You keep looking at the plaque don't change. Look at me. 65, 70, 70, 70, 70, 75, 75. He makes his decisions a lot faster than you. $80. $80, you get a shirt. $80, thank you very much. 85, see, he's got a whole closet full of them. I've been dealing with this guy all weekend. I got 85 over there, 90. Give me 90, give me 90, give me 90. I need 90, 90. I got 85 once, 85 twice. Sold for $85 right over there. Raise your hand, sir. Thank you. A uh, Larry Hansen, number 113. Is Larry Hansen still here? Okay, Larry's gone. Okay, who's gonna give me $25? Oh, there's Larry. Show every Larry, I won't do it to you either, I promise. I won't do it to you. So just raise your hand. That's the artist right back there, ladies. Where? Oh my goodness gracious. She's back. Stop my beating heart. I got $25 from the supermodel. Who's gonna give me 30? Who's gonna give me 30 dollars? I got 30 over there, 35, give me 35, 35, 35, 40, give me 40, 40, 40, give me 40, 45, 45, 45, 45, 50, 50, give 50. Oh come on. She wants it. I know she does. Give me 50 bucks, 50 bucks, give me 50 bucks. Give me 50 bucks. When I mentioned Viagra, your ears parked up. Give me 50 bucks, come on. 
50. Okay, 55, 55, 55, 55. 60 and I won't pick on you anymore. I promise. I promise I won't pick. Otherwise, I'll be on you like a bad rug. Give me 65, 60. Give me 65, 60. $60 going once. $60 going twice. Just smile once. Oh, there it is. Sold for $60 right over there. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Anybody out there got... Anybody out there got a 57 Chevy? Ah, you're missing a hood? Yeah. yeah, well, we happen to have it off your car. I tell you what I'm going to do. See and think this is the last part of the auction we got. That's one of the last big items. The first $25 takes it. Who's going to give me 25 Ha, 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 you guys. Yeah, that's 25 50 75 See how this works. Okay, I got 75 in the back. Who's gonna get, there's 100 right there, 100 quarter, give me 100 quarter, give me 100 quarter, I need 100 quarter, give me 100 quarter. I need 100 quarter. You ever buy one of these things, about chunk? You, they're a lot of money, they're more than 100 quarter, give me 100 quarter, 100 quarter. I got 100, I can't believe this. Did I tell you this was a Bob Bahonic? Okay, you give me 75 then? <laughs> I got $100 right there, I got $100 once. And we'll throw in a t-shirt for a hundred and a quarter right there. I got a hundred and a half. I got a hundred and a half. Give me a hundred and a half. I need 175, 175, 175, 175, 175. 175 dollars. That is almost four families in there for one night. For 175. One, that's all I need. 175. Okay. I got 175. Thank you. Two big ones. 200. See, he's a lot quicker than you. A lot quicker. I think your earring's too tight. Loose the auction was very exciting, but Bill spotted a representative from McDonald's Charities and wanted to chat with him. Well, behind me, we, the uh, auction continues. It's really very exciting. I'll tell you something, uh, an auctioneer, you know, they're more entertainer than anything else, aren't they? Oh, it's unbelievable how much personality he's got. Oh, he really does. What a, what a job he's doing up there. He's just got the crowd rubbed up. As a matter of fact, yesterday, uh, the crowd was unbelievable, and I couldn't believe the enthusiasm. The reason I'm pleased is because it brings some attention to these long overlooked artists in the motorsport community. But I have a feeling the reason you're enthused is it's bringing in some money for McDonald's charities. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, the, the proceeds from tonight, 100% of all the proceeds tonight are going to our new house under construction with Advocate Hope Children's Hospital down in Oakland. First, tell the folks who you are. I'm Shane Johnson, the Director of Development with Ronald McDonald House Charities of Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana. Okay, what I'm trying to do is I am trying to find whoever it is to pat on the back for having this idea of bringing the public attention to the great artists in the motorsport community. Are you the guy? That wouldn't be me. That would be Bob Bahonik. Bob Bahonik is the guy that kind of fire engine this whole thing? Yep, he got it going and the, along with Harry Willett. Along with Harry Willett and yeah. the two guys. Now, they brought it to you guys then? They brought it to us, yes. Okay, and as I understand it, because I, I think this has been a huge success, that you guys are going to be on board with this thing for a while. Oh, definitely, definitely. We're already making plans for next year. So next year's World of Wheels, we're going to have the Brushmasters down here again, and the people can come and watch these great artists work and maybe get some mentoring? Obviously, yes. I mean, we they already watched them pull a couple guys kids out of the audience here and let them get on the panel and give them some instruction to try it out. Isn't that absolutely the best? In fact, I've been really surprised, these guys that have been doing this for 40, 50 years, how willing they are to share what they know with the youngsters that are just starting out. These guys are generous on all, all kinds of levels. And it's good seeing them getting some young people into the trade that they're doing. It really is. And like I say, I am so pleased that they feel so open about this, that they're willing to share their seat. Because there are, you know, I don't know if you know anything about this stuff, but we've been learning about it as we've been going. Uh, you know that you've got to make an O go above the line and below the line, otherwise it'll look too small. I bet you don't know that. I didn't know that. And the A, the top of the A, has to go higher than the line, otherwise it will look smaller than the other letters. I didn't know that either. Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you, if you ever lay out a sign and you make all the letters the same height, and you stand back and look at it and you say, hey, this is harder than it looks. Maybe I should pay attention because uh, if you read my writing, you would, you can't read it anyway. So yeah, but There you go. <laughs> Anyhow, is there anything else that you'd like the audience to know about the Ronald McDonald Charities or your particular portion of it that, that you think they would find of, of interest? Well, Ronald McDonald Charities of Chicago and Northwest Indiana, we currently operate three houses. We're building our fourth. So we have a house on the north side near Children's Memorial Hospital. We have a house down near University of Chicago Comer's Children's Hospital. And we have one out near the Loyola Medical Center. Um, so we're looking to build the fourth one down in Oakland near Evergood Hope Children's Hospital. And what we strive to do is help improve the health, well-being, and children in our area. Um, so we, we try to give the atmosphere of a home away from home 
when a family's in need, when a child's being treated. So fair to say you guys kind of want to tip your hats to the Brushmasters. Definitely, definitely. You know, every $50 race a night puts a family in one of our, our rooms for a night. So is that right? This is awesome, yes. Well, I will tell you something. Once again, I am so proud of the motorsport community. You know, we talk about what the Toys for Tots, Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade does every year for Toys for Tots for needy children at Christmas. Here is another example of the motorsport community stepping forward and donating and volunteering their efforts to help a great cause. Definitely. Thank got, you so much. I got it right. You got it. I got it right. Folks, I've got it right. Before we close, Bill wanted to talk to the men who started all of this, Harry Willett and Bob Behonick. Well, it's over. What we started, what we started, I didn't start anything. What I started covering, I guess, three months ago at uh, Willett um, Coachworks? Yeah, Willett Coachworks. Oh. Will it Coach Works. Willett Coachworks, three months ago, we started telling the folks about the plans that you guys had. I think huge success. What do you think? Huge success, without a doubt. Mega, mega success for all of us, yes. Okay. Mega. Tell the folks once again who you are. I'm Harry Willett, uh, Willett Coach Works, and also the director of the World of Wheels down here at the show. And once again? I'm Bob Honick from the Chicago Brushmasters. Say that last name again so we can Bob, do it right in the Bob, studio. Bob B. Honick from the Chicago Brushmasters. B. Honick. Girls, it's B. Honick. Anyhow, I was, last night it was unbelievable here. I couldn't even get near this thing. You had the crowds just absolutely popping. And another thing I want to say. Uh, kudos to the uh, auctioneer. What an entertainer. A terrific. Uh, you, do you know his name? Pat Callahan. Pat Callahan? Pat Callahan. Did you see any of his work? Oh, yeah. Well, I've known Pat Callahan for 30, 35 years. He's oh, an old. Really? Oh, yeah. He was back in the uh, Northern Illinois Street Ride Association, and SRA, and all of the other car groups back in those. And still is. He's still an avid hot rider. Super entertainer. I thought he made the whole thing, just did a great job with it. Now, is there anything that you guys want to tell the folks? Because apparently next year, 2008, World of Wheels, this is going to be part of it again. It's going to be part of it again, and we want people to come out and appreciate what they did this year. Hopefully, we'll be able to step up and at least equal what we did this year. How about yourself, Bob? Hey, I'm pumped to do it again. Uh, we're going to make some more panels and paint some more race cars and, and do some really neat stuff here at the show. I will tell you something. I couldn't be, I'm just absolutely delighted that the artists are getting the attention that's so long overdue. I couldn't be more and more pleased. I'm so happy. Anyhow, we're done, folks. A uh, huge success. I couldn't be more pleased, and apparently these guys feel the same way. Success is right. When the final numbers were in, the Chicago Brushmasters raised well over $50,000 for Ronald McDonald Charities. In addition to that, the event was so well received, it will be now a part of the World of Wheels show every year. Pretty cool. Now, before we run completely out of time, we want to show you our old friend, Ken Sawinski, better known as Stitz, one of the finest Midwest motorsport artists doing something special. I grabbed Stitz for one more quick piece. First of all, there are so many things we didn't get a chance to talk about. I'm so glad this is going to be part of the, every upcoming uh, World of Wheels show, at least for the foreseeable future. McDonald's sure. people are apparently very happy, so that, I'm sure that pleases you guys. Oh, for sure, big time. We had a real successful weekend out of the box here with this as an inaugural event, and uh, we look forward to next year. Are you surprised how interested people are in what you guys do? Uh, am I surprised? No. The motorsports crowd down here uh, you know, turned out, and uh, accordingly they uh, responded. I mean, it's... Uh, they all get to go home with a little something and, uh, you know, a little memorabilia, and uh, I'm sure they're, it, it's great. I mean, you know, and we helped the charity. Got, we made some money for the kids. Right, and the, one of the things here I didn't get into at all, it was so cool around here. There were raceway park signs and Santa Fe Speedway signs. I saw a sign for uh, or a door for Bill Lutz, a door for Bobby Dotter, a door for right. Jimmy O'Connor. I saw one for, I don't, Tony Izzo. I mean, right. we didn't right. even talk, but what I want you to do okay. is I want to show the audience Stitz at work at the fastest speed you've ever gone. You know what I'm talking about, right? I know exactly what you're talking about, okay. Bill. I'll tell you in advance, folks, this took 42 minutes to take.
wish I could do something like that, and so fast, too. As always, we're out of time too soon, with only enough left to acknowledge the fine work of our award-winning production team, including Tom McGrady, Art Laushat, our webmaster, Frank Barbalace, and Sue Cassanda. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant. Music is created for us by independent artists, Roger Polly and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we have to take a moment to thank the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Janine Lauschat, May Chen, and our host, Bill Wilt. Me, I'm Samantha Bentley, reminding you the Chicago Brushmasters will be a part of every World of Wheels show in the future. So for you budding artists out there, mark your calendar for next year. You'll have a wonderful opportunity to be mentored by the very best. Thanks for watching. See you next week. This program made possible in part by support from Bridgestone Firestone and your local Bridgestone Firestone tire retailers. This program made possible in part by support from Copy That, located in the County Farm Plaza at County Farm Road and Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from PB Food Products, located on 47th Street at Western Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from J.C. Whitney & Company, located just off I-80 at the Utica exit in LaSalle, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. This program made possible in part by support from the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade, held on Western Avenue in Chicago, the first Sunday in December. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or you can write to Motorsport, P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois. 60666. We enjoy hearing from our audience. Please let us know what you think. Next week on Motorsports Unlimited, it's time for some fun in the sun. Or ice, or sand, or grass. We're talking about hovercraft. And it's time for another look at these versatile, technically interesting vehicles anyone can drive, including our motorsport girls. Don't believe it? Check it out next week on Motorsports Unlimited. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.